Thanks, Peter, for the introduction. Uh, again, my name is Chris Dwinell. I work for Wright Pierce. We're located in Topsom. I'm also joined this evening by Mike Sweat, uh, as well as John Edgerton from Wright Pierce as well, uh, both who have been involved in the work that we've done over the past year and a half to two years for the city. Um, really appreciate the opportunity. We've been talking about giving this presentation now for quite some time and looking forward to sharing uh, some of our findings and work and what the future uh, may hold for the wastewater uh, collection and treatment system here in the city. Uh, Peter's done a nice job of overviewing the kind of the past, so I'll go over that somewhat quickly and then get into more of the present um, uh, as well as the uh, future um, and some projects looking forward, what you should be expecting uh, moving forward for uh, funding requests um, and, and some summary and recommendations. <coughs> Um, Peter mentioned the plant being built and a lot of the collection seats uh, being built in 1971. Um, and while there was some work done in the 80s, really this consent agreement from Maine DEP in 1992 to address those combined sewer overflows was really the starting point of a lot of work that happened uh, within your collection system. Um, it led to the development of what's known as a CSO master plan, essentially a large document that evaluates opportunities to be able to mitigate or eliminate those CSOs that you had. And at that time, I think there might have been seven or so of them at that time, and you've got down seven or eight of them, and now you've got down to five. That document led to a uh, upgrade to the wastewater treatment facility, one in 1997, also one in 1993, which I'll show in the next slide. Um, so the upgrades that were about now almost 18 years ago to your wastewater treatment facility, which included a provision to be able to treat some of that extraneous water. Um, it also led to many subsequent updates to that plan, one of which was just recently submitted to Maine DEP uh, in January of this year. And that's really just updating the work that's been done, what progress has been made in eliminating this extraneous flows and these CSOs that happen during wet weather events. And really this, work, this 1992 consent agreement has really uh, driven a lot of the wastewater related work uh, over the past two decades here in the city. Um, here's your wastewater treatment facility. Some people may be familiar with it. It's by the North End Boat Launch off Bowery Street. Um, very nice, very well-maintained uh, facility uh, by, the, by the city staff, Chris and his staff. Um, as I mentioned, there was a 1993 upgrade uh, that uh, contemplated the, the dewatering system, the, the system that dewaters the solids. Uh, there was also a 1997 upgrade as well. Um, that was the, the uh, facility that was put in to be able to provide treatment or primary treatment for some of this extraneous water that makes it to the plant. Um, as far as expenditures uh, at the wastewater treatment facility, here's some figures for the 1993 and the 97 upgrades. Uh, the 1997 one, as you can see, was about a $5 million upgrade, and that results in a, a $315,000 annual payment that the city makes for 20 years. Um, and I'll talk about that retirement on that in a few slides. Over the past five years, there's been approximately $100,000 a year spent, and I believe this is accurate, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris or Peter, that uh, for this fiscal year, this current fiscal year, there's only about $87,000 allocated for capital improvements at the wastewater treatment facility. That's not to be confused with the operating and maintenance budget. That's obviously much larger. But this is for capital improvements, uh, replacement of equipment and whatnot. Um, so that was a history of the treatment plan, a little history of the collection system, which Peter already covered. In the early 80s, you started with doing some of this major separation work where you were taking stormwater lines and separating them from the sanitary lines. And that work actually came in anticipation of that CSO master plan that was done in 1993. So there was already a recognition that there was a lot of extraneous water getting into the system well before that plan was written. Um, in the 90s, there were a number of large separation projects in Lambert Park on Commercial Street and Center Street, uh, and also some work that was done as part of the street improvements program. I think that was some sump pump removals and roof drain removal type programs to get those out of the uh, sanitary system. Um, the, in the 2000s, there were a number of CSO master plan <coughs> updates and reassessment of where the city stood, um, and also implementing uh, with any CSO master plan, you're required to do a number of things to try to minimize what's getting into 
the catch basins, like removing gravel off the streets, taking sand off the streets, uh, trying to do some sort of catching of stuff that's coming out there, maintaining your infrastructure, making sure it stays in the pipe. So there's a number of things that need to be done. And those are just best management practices that are done with anyone that has a CSO in their town or community. Um, over the past five years, um, a good amount of money has been spent. This is uh, uh, particularly on the Howard Street pump station. $1.3 million spent there, and, and that was uh, over the past five years. So there's been some money spent. And overall, when you look at all of the work on the collection system, and when I say pump stations, the pipeline, and CSO-related projects, the city has spent over two, nearly $2.5 million uh, mm -hmm. on that work uh, over the past uh, seven years or so, six to seven years. Um, here's just a listing of some of the projects uh, that you have um, completed uh, over the past two or three years. Green Street Project, um, Willow Street Project, and Winship Green Projects. Uh, these are projects we were not specifically involved with, so if you have questions, hopefully Peter can probably answer them better than I can. But just to give you a, a summary of the type of expenditures that you've had within your collection system to help minimize these CSOs. So looking to the <clears throat> present and to the future, despite 22 years of work, totaling over $10 million that you've spent on your wastewater collection system, both the treatment facility as well as the collection system. As Peter mentioned, there's still a number of areas that are still overwhelmed during wet weather. You still have active CSOs, and in fact, you still have some areas, as we talked about with Willow Street, and there's a couple of other areas where you have water getting to the ground surface out of the, the sanitary system. Every day that the system gets older, it gets in better, you know, you need to continually maintain any asset you have or it's just going to continue to get worse in time. The city's been doing a good job, but there's still some areas that need attention. Four CSOs, uh, the fifth one that uh, Peter mentioned is actually the one, the licensed one that's actually at the wastewater treatment facility as well. So that makes the five that you actually have. So that's actually five still remain active. Um, Beyond the collection system, certainly with, any, with your pump stations and your wastewater plant that treats that 2 million gallons every day, there's equipment there that needs to be maintained. Just like a road that needs to be maintained uh, or, or it wears out, the same thing goes with a pump or a building or a roof or anything at these facilities. And as, as Peter mentioned, while I don't know for sure, I would say that probably the wastewater system that you have here is, if it's not your number one asset in value, it's darn close to it just because of the magnitude of the uh, infrastructure that's there. And certainly for anyone that hasn't been down to the treatment plant or hasn't seen the facility, it may be something you want to set up a visit with Chris Wallace to go down there and see the facility that they operate or some of the pump stations. Uh, it's quite a bit to it. So still, while there's still a lot of work to be done, a lot of work has been done and there's more to be done, the good news is that debt that I alluded to from the 1997 upgrade is being retired in 2017, and that's a $315,000 annual payment. If you look at that at a 2% interest, that's just over a $5 million project. Um, so an opportunity really to do about $5 million worth of work once that debt has been retired without impacting your existing rate payers. Uh, so that's some good news uh, with regard to uh, the wastewater collection system and the investments that uh, are needed. Um, back in 2012, we started uh, working for the city, uh, taking a look at the wastewater collection system. The first task that we took on was a comprehensive assessment of the wastewater treatment facility on Bowery Street, as well as five pump stations located in the south end. And essentially, that was, again, a comprehensive assessment of all the assets are there. How are they doing? Are they have enough capacity? Are they, do they need replacement? Um, does the plant need additional capacity? Has it got enough capacity? Um, what are the permitting things that are on the horizon that might impact the, the, the community? Um, what are there for code-related issues with the buildings that were built back in the 90s? They may not be compliant with existing codes. Um, so it was really a soup-to-nuts evaluation of the wastewater treatment facility as well as the five pump stations in the south, uh, four in the south end and the Aegis Drive one, which is across from the uh, tennis courts. So that was the first evaluation we did, and that was finished up in April 2013, and that developed, I'll talk about them in a moment, a number of phased upgrades to the facility, things that could be done not all at once, but over time. Um, the next evaluation we did, I know it's kind of, you weren't intended to be able to read the text here, um, was 
to take a look at so much work had been done within the collection system, all these CSO master plan updates, all these various projects, $10 million worth of expensive expenses. Let's try to get our arms around, a, what, around what we have done, how effective it's been, how much where the flows are hitting now, what CSOs are seeing the worst impacts, and where we should apply some of our emphasis moving forward. So this was a fairly, fairly focused effort, fairly short-term, uh, short small study, to kind of wrap our arms around all that um, that had been done. Following on that work, um, we determined that really the south end area, the Hunt Street and the Rose Street pump stations, while work had been done back in the 90s to take a look at those and the CSO that's down there, which is at the Rose Street pump station, not much time and effort had been spent in the south end of Bath on this CSO issue or the collection system issue over the past 20 years. So we embarked on a study down there to really evaluate what was causing the CSO down there as well as what's called a, a sanitary sewer overflow, basically wastewater coming through a manhole onto the surface of the street because that does occur in extreme storms in, location, in one location down there. So taking a look at that, um, we also did smoke testing, basically putting smoke up the pipe and determining where there might be cracks in the pipes, um, roof drains connected, sump pumps connected, whatever we can find. Um, the good news is we found some areas where um, there was some, there's always some surprises when you do stuff like that. Um, and through this study, we made some, and I'll talk about them and some of the, the planned recommended upgrades um, down there is to do, continue to do some evaluation and some TV inspection of the pipes down there to get a real sense. It's a pretty big network. There's a lot of pipes on the south end of Bath. It went all the way from the top of the hill by Week Street on Washington, from there basically up to High Street and all the way down to pretty much Grafham Way or Riverview area. So that was the extent of the area that we studied. So a pretty large area. Uh, we also recommended some improvements within the collection system to try to minimize extraneous water that's getting in there, water that's getting in from cracks in pipes, could be sump pumps, um, other, any other way that water can get into the collection system. And the reason we want to do that is because these pump stations pump to each other. The Hunt Street pump station, as you may, you may know from the pumps to the Rose Street pump station, so any flow that you add to the Hunt Street pump station is going to have an impact on Rose Street. Right now, Rose Street has an overflow pipe that overflows during wet weather to the river. If you add any more flow to Hunt, it's going to add more to Rose, which means more to the river, which is not something that the regulatory agencies typically like to hear about. So we looked at options to be able to try to reduce water into the system and then possibly bypass that Rose Street pump station so you can actually pump around it and avoid the need to upgrade both of those stations when you do something from Hunt Street South. A lot of details on the recommendations there and those are, uh, um, I'll talk a little bit about in coming slides. Um, and the, the most recent thing that we um, completed for the city was just in January of this year and, and really it was the goal of this, this study or the end goal was to come up with a CSO master plan update. And there's been many of them that have been done over the years and it's something that DEP tends to like to see every five years or so. The last one was done in January of 2011, so it was actually four years. But because there's been more work done, a better understanding of things like the Willow Street area, it was an opportune time to be able to update DEP on what have we done, what have we taken off the list, um, what, what have we added to the list and what needs to be done over the next 10 years or so. Uh, so that document was just submitted, uh, like I said, in January. It's about a 16-page document. I'll, I'll hit on a few of those projects in the, in the next few slides. Um, other things that have been going on, you, met, you heard earlier about the green infrastructure grant and the modeling work that was done, looking at the possibility of uh, uh, getting extraneous water um, out of the sewer line that runs down the railroad tracks from, from Willow Street to Center Street. Um, and that study has been, is in draft form right now and is being upgraded to, updated to final form. Uh, the city's working directly with EPA and EPA's consultant for that, uh, for that grant. Uh, the city has also completed some uh, closed circuit television work within the collection system. Um, Juniper Street, Park Street area. Um, I, th I think this work has been done or it's ongoing, is that correct, Lee? Um, and I know this, I believe there's plans to do more. Uh, but that's really a, you get a real good understanding of what's going on in your collection system when you go out, especially during wet weather, and you can see how much clean water is coming down people's laterals, and that has a good indication of sump pumps being tied in. 
you also just, whether you had CSOs in your community or not, being able to see the inside of your pipe and understand where your needs truly are is very important. And that's really an ongoing thing. That's not necessarily something that uh, should be done from time to time, really going out and doing this, a small portion of your uh, collection system every year um, is a really important thing to do. Um, so looking forward, that was kind of an update on what Wright Pierce has done um, since 2012 for the city. Through uh, the completion of the large, uh, the evaluation of the wastewater treatment facility and the five pump stations that we looked at, as well as the study that looking at the south end, as well as past work that's been done by the city, um, we've come up with a listing of projects um, that we envision happening over the next several years. Um, and a number of those are in that CSO master plan that has already been, su been submitted to um, Maine DEP. Um, so over the next um, few years, or next two years, this year and next year, um, a number of critical path CSO abatement projects. So the big focus over the next couple of years is going to be projects within the collection system, one of them being Willow Street, that area, um, Juniper and Park area, where there's also been some overflow issues, I, and some starting some work down in the south end as a result of the study that we did in the Hunt and Rose Street drainage areas. Um, one of the projects down there is, in fact, and I... Peter's not close enough to kick me, but um, while no one likes to hear that we're going to reopen an old CSO that was closed many, many years ago, we've done it in a couple of communities. And in this particular case, we're recommending it down in that area. And the reason is it's better to have wastewater go into the river than it is to go to a street where it can have human contact. Uh, so we're going to be looking into the possibility of opening up one where there is the system is currently overwhelmed right now. Um, that's going to allow us to be able to flow meter that and understand just truly how much water is going out of the system. And that will allow us be able to be able to design improvements there so that we can minimize that in the future. So the big focus over the next couple of years within the collection system is going to be, and there's, there's seven different projects that we're going to be looking at, uh, the city will be looking at um, over that, uh, that time frame. Uh, there's also um, some needed upgrades at the treatment facility um, over the next couple of years. Uh, on the left, what you see is a belt filter press. That's for um, squeezing basically the water out of the solids that are collected at the treatment plant. And as the solids go to your landfill, uh, the water just goes back into the treatment plant for treatment. Uh, that's a 20-plus-year-old piece of equipment now. It was put in in 1993. Uh, there's a huge amount of investment that we would be required to keep that equipment operational up over $100,000. And when you start talking about that kind of investment, you start determining is it worth putting that money into the system uh, or looking at a new, newer technology that can dry the solids more. Uh, also on the right is the bottom of your aeration tank. If you drive down, you can see the tanks where there's a lot of bubbles coming up. That's your biological process that treats your wastewater. There's a need to replace those diffusers, which is what you can see, those air diffusers at the bottom of the tank and a few other upgrades that are necessary over the short term at the treatment plant. Uh, moving ahead uh, to the 2017 to 2019 window, uh, there's nine more CSO projects that are listed in the CSO master plan update. Some of these projects are not the largest projects in the world. They can be very small projects, but suffice to say there's, I think, 24 total projects that were in that letter that went to Maine DEP. Uh, so we're trying to uh, break them up over time, not uh, to spread out the cost, but also to um, um, minimize, uh, spread out the cost, uh, but also do the highest priority ones first. Uh, and also, um, as recommended in our uh, three of the pump stations, we recommended upgrades, the Riverview pump station, the Bridge Street pump station, uh, and the Aegis pump station. And as you can see from the photo on the right, there's quite a bit of corrosion going on in that pump station. These pump stations date back to 1969 and 1971 with very little upgrades, if any, that have been done over that time frame. So there's some needs there. Um, looking even further forward, um, the treatment plan in 2020 is going to be 23 to 28 years old because the equipment was upgraded in 93 and 97. Uh, there's a lot of equipment there, just like anything that's going to wear out and need replacement. So within our study, we had recommended a more comprehensive upgrade to the plant to kind of touch every area in the plant. A lot of the mechanical equipment, 
uh, some stuff that's just worn out from dealing with grit and solids, wear and tear. And if you go to the treatment plant, you'll see the kind of environment that the equipment operates in. It's a very tough duty. It's really an industrial type facility. Um, so there's a number of recomm uh, upgrades recommended, um, again, looking at code-related issues. Um, we've pushed out the pump station upgrades in the south end. That those are the Hunt and Rose ones, the major pump station upgrades down the road a little bit to allow more time to be able to try to take some water out of the system. Before we go make a pump station so big to handle all this water, why don't we try to take some of the water out first so it doesn't need to be as large? Or we have more capacity for development. Yes? Um, just out of curiosity, the pump station it went against, mm. what does that do? The one, uh, the bridge, the one, yeah, Bridge to Bridge Street pump station. Yeah, that that pumps up to uh, basically up to Weber Street. Um, it collects the water from that area along, par probably from where Grafham Way and Riverview come up, from there south to Winnegans, and the area right around that Winnegans area. I'm not sure if it goes up. Does it head up the hill? Gravity down line down over the hill. Oh, this one right here was Bridge Street Pump Station. So that, yep. On the right, yeah. The one on the right is the Bridge Street Pump Station. It's not a large pump station. It's, it's a fairly small pump station, but it serves that fairly small area right around there. Yeah. But that would be an area, if you looked at upgrading that pump station, you'd want to understand what potential there might be for any additional development in that area and make right-size that pump station. Of course, that pumps into Hunt Street and Rose Street. So if you make that bigger, it could, you know, increase the problem. So yeah, you need. It does pump up to uh, pretty much Weber and, and High Street. Yeah. Um, so we talked about the major pump station upgrades and major, uh, fairly substantive pump station upgrades. They're the brick buildings that you drive by when you go down Washington Street, Rose and Hunt Street. Those are a couple of the larger pump stations the city actually has. Um, and the remaining eight CSO projects. There's eight more projects. Um, I think it's kind of too early at this point to say, yeah, we know for certain we're going to do those eight projects because you're going to do 16 or 17 more before that. That may go a long way towards solving a lot of your problems. While you still may have to do projects in 2020, it may not be those eight projects. It may be something else because we keep reassessing every five years. So probably around 2020, we'd be looking at doing another update and saying, are these really the right projects to do, or should we be investing somewhere else? Um, we've talked a lot about capital. We talked a little bit about the CCTV work, closed camera uh, television work, TV work within the system. It's not only <coughs> all about capital, the investments that you make. There's obviously your operating maintenance budget um, associated with the treatment plant, but there's a lot of costs every year that deal with pipeline cleaning and inspection and replacement. Going out and taking a look at, geez, we did this project in this collection system. Um, did we do a good job? How much water did we get out in a comparable storm? The smoke testing that I mentioned. <coughs> Maintaining right-of-ways. While it's nice to have pipes that always run down streets, they don't all run down streets. Some of them are cross-country, so you have to maintain those. You don't want trees and roots growing down into your pipes. Um, and certainly there's needs for equipment and personnel to do this work. So while that's not really part of a capital request, it's just something you should be aware of, that there are needs, like with anything, street, sweeping the street, cleaning the sewer line, there's things that need to be done from time to time to maintain what's a very important piece of infrastructure for the city. Um, as part of the work that we've done and as part of the work that's been done previously, um, what we did was we put together some numbers uh, based on, again, these are study level numbers based on the studies that we've done to estimate some of the costs um, that the city could be looking at for uh, upgrades uh, to the treatment plant, to the pump stations, as well as work for CSOs. For the next couple of years, we talked about the dewatering upgrade and the aeration upgrade at the treatment plant. Those are fairly substantive upgrades nearly five million, or just over $5 million. Not really a lot of work at the pump stations over the next couple of years. There may be a few things in your CIP, a, a pump that broke down that needed to be replaced, but fairly, fairly limited over the next couple of years. And a little over a million dollars in those collection system projects that we talked about. 
moving ahead to the next, the 2017 to 2019 window, um, little or no work at the treatment plant, taking a little break at the treatment plant, focusing more on the pump stations and the collection system. Uh, again, not a huge amount in those, in those years compared to the previous two years or the 2020 to 25 window. Looking at that 2020 to 2025 window, um, those numbers are probably the numbers we know the least about at this point because they're that far down the road. A lot of that money in the pump station, the 2.2 to $7 million, really has a lot to do with the success of some of the collection system work we do in the next few years. We may find that $7 million is not necessary. It may be something closer to the low end. Suffice to say, we've carried a range in there. And, and the goal is not to scare anyone here. The goal is to let you know that it's a large piece of infrastructure. If you had to replace your wastewater treatment facility and all the infrastructure that you have, you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars um, to do that. Um, so I have a few notes at the bottom. A um, couple of things that aren't included in these are um, don't include operation and maintenance costs of the wastewater system. These are just capital costs. And we did this presentation back in October. I just didn't update the numbers to February. So it's as of October. So um, obviously a lot of uh, some, some larger numbers there. And again, um, that's something that um, city staff will be coming forward um, with recommendations. And I think, I don't know if you wanted to talk about bond or you want me to bring that up. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so, and I can go back to put the costs up, but as I mentioned before, the city, city and your city staff do an excellent job of keeping the treatment plant, the collection system, and the pump stations functioning 24-7, 365 days a year to get wastewater to the plant and treated, meeting its permit, and into the river. With all, even with all that work, though, there's, there's a capital upgrades that are necessary from time to time. Um, I think specifically when you look at street projects or projects within the collection system, it's important to look at areas where, geez, we may be doing, example, the North Street project. We're doing a project to re replace the surface of North Street and change the streetscape there. Why don't we separate out these five basins as well? So we're able to do two different, hit, till two birds with one stone in that regard. Um, and obviously, and I, my next slide is some funding opportunities. There's a lot of opportunities some of them through Maine DEP with the Clean Water SRF program and even opportunities to get some principal forgiveness on the principal that you have. Best I can tell with the city's population being under 10,000 as far that you are, um, should be able to go after rural development loan grant packages and those can be fairly lucrative as far as the grant component depending on how you score uh, in the community uh, on a number of various factors. We talked earlier about CDBG funding, and you're going to be looking to use that for the North Street project. There's other opportunities there, some state and tribal assistance grants, STAG grants. Efficiency Maine, you're certainly familiar with that, and that probably would apply mostly to the treatment plan or any pump station upgrades. You may get opportunity. There's a lot of money. Efficiency Maine has a lot of money, and it's your money. It's all of our money that we put into our rates for electric that they've put back into the program. So there's a lot of opportunities there. Uh, and the, I threw up the EPA green infrastructure one. You're familiar with that with the Willow Street work. So um, while there's, you know, th there's some large numbers here, there's also some assistance available to be able to help you uh, do this more affordably. Uh, and also, as you recall, uh, you have $315,000 annual payment in 2017 that's being retired. That equates to about a $5 million project, a little bit better than a $5 million loan without any rate increase uh, or impacts. <clears throat> 